Hi, Danielle. Hi, Casey. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. I'm happy to be back. Me、Took、too. It's a little time off. Yeah, you know, every summer we we, we take some time, and... Yeah, and it felt it felt good to just take a beat and do some reflecting. And I'm happy to be back. Me too. I've missed you, and I've missed your cute bangs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They've been too、They're、short like, as you know. Well, look, we're all not giving our best looks right now during the. We're, we're during not the all Ramona、fatigue. getting a full hair and makeup <sighs> She is... with a man who's wearing a mask. Ramona, no mask, just simply a teddy. That she's never not a in a teddy. teddy. She's never her and her and Avery are always doing a a, a mom daughter workout together. They've left the safe harbor of Boca Raton and moved back up north, as I can see from yeah, her. Yeah, she's back in New York, maskless little maskless wonder running around. <sighs> Leah, I'll be reading later the rant that Leah posted. Leah、today. did a rant. She didn't say Ramona's name, but we all knew who she meant. Oh, well, of course, of course, very clear. Danielle, before we begin, we have to announce some news. Yes, we put out a call to our beloved listeners three weeks ago and asked for your your all help to contribute money to Brianna Taylor's GoFundMe started by her aunt and. Truly, Danielle. As always, we thought you know we would get some money. Anything would help, and that that would be wonderful.、Mm-hmm. Every one of you listeners, you come through every single time. This is now the third. Why、time. do we doubt you? Yeah,、Because、I always you doubt always you. Always far exceed our expectations like, in ways that like. <laughs> I'm kidding. Casey and I were truly brought to tears. Yes, we tears. both called each other crying. You all raised over forty five thousand five hundred dollars. All for Brianna's family to hopefully, you know, pay for legal bills、yes. to get justice for her. It's and unbelievable! It just far surpassed our wildest dreams, and it's so exciting. And we just wanted—we're so thankful, so grateful. The, the listeners on this show are so compassionate,、mm-hmm. and I'm and generous. Really, we're just so generous, and it's so wonderful. For any amount that you donated, thank you for doing that. And also, the first five hundred, as promised, will get a Zoom show. We will be sending out links to that to the first five hundred people. Soon, we had wanted it to match up with a sort of New York reunion of sorts, but because there, like the schedules are all off, we don't know when reunions、mm-hmm. are coming or when even regular episodes are coming.、Mm-hmm. So, and we're trying to. We have been in contact with Bravo, so we are trying to figure this out. We're hoping it'll be within a month or so. You will receive information in a timely fashion, and there will be a live show. Yes, as soon as we and if and if we don't know when the reunion is, like then we'll just do a, another sort of great episode of New York because we don't want you guys to have to wait too long, and、no. we don't want to have to wait too long to do this show. And, and thank you. It's not going to be a normal podcast. It's going to be a full live show done、oh. right here in my nook alone, and Danielle <laughs> will be doing it from her. Doesn't mean there's not room to sing and dance, guys. I always have a ballet bar near me. <laughs> don't worry. worry, I'll be getting earbuds so I can move about the cabin. I'm going to show everyone some moves and some song.、Uh, so we we really just really wanted to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Of course, you know the thing that is still so devastating is that none of these officers have been fired, convicted, charged, nothing. And、yes. uh, Mayor one Fisher, one of them, one of that, one of the three was fired, but the rest are not. He was. He, he, the intent is to fire him. <sighs> It's so I hope Mayor Fisher has come out saying he has intent to terminate this motherfucker. Oh, thank you. Well, keep calling, keep writing, keep Please, emailing, and let's keep Brianna Taylor in our consciousness during this、uh, collective reckoning that's happening in the country. And yeah, and let's keep, keep the pressure of, on. Yeah, and I and I think of her mother, I swear, every single day,、yeah. and what she said about her daughter, and it's just so beautiful. And、um, yeah, I just I, I, let's all keep her in our thoughts, and let's all. Um, do our best to see if we can get some sort of justice for yep, this for this、exactly. beautiful woman. But thank you all so much. That really was heartwarming, and、um, we really appreciate it. Last thing we want to say before we take a break and come back with our illustrious show is that you know we just want to quickly, quickly say we know so much is, is going on in the country right now, and we hope you'll you'll permit us the kind of. Runway for us to try to make you laugh after this, and we just, you know, our our whole intent for this podcast is to lift spirits, and we hope and we can do that today. It doesn't minimize it, what's happening. Yeah, it doesn't mean we're not thinking about what's happening and trying to educate ourselves and better ourselves and and move forward in a way to provide support and allyship for people、um, that need it. But but we do, you know, we want to have some laughs too, and and. And we hope we can give、list. you some. So we、yeah. hope we can do that. 
So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. I'm glad to be glad to be here, Danielle. Me too. I missed you guys and I missed you, Case. Thank you. I missed you. We're back. Oh, Danielle. We sure are. Now, there were no new episodes this week, but we will speak about the past. Real quick, I just wanted to tell you something my daughter said last night, which really made me laugh. And and I thought, like, I I like to use this in conversations, and I hope people use this with me, is my, we were talking... And my, so my husband was starting a story last night. He was just saying, you know, oh, this is interesting. And my daughter stops him and she goes, wait, um, is this story going to be interesting or no? (laughs) (laughs) Really quick. (laughs) She's like, real quick. Is this story going to like, and I was like, you know what? That's something I'd like to ask before a lot of people speak. And I'm sure a lot of people had asked before I speak, is this going to be interesting? Do I need to invest in this story or because no? Because if, if it's not, shut the fuck up, exactly. honestly, you know? And well, I say this actually not with love, which is like, I was actually writing about this in the book that I'm writing and this might sound mean and, and you might see yourself in this. And I just watched Hannah Gadsby's new special. Oh, called, I haven't watched it yet. Oh my gosh, it's called Douglas. She did say something that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> she was basically she like at the top of the show, she was like, listen, I'm going to lay out for you what will be happening in this special. And I will be saying really bad things about America, but don't invest. She's like, don't invest <laughs> in what I'm saying. Just like, let, like hear it, but don't invest. And okay. she kept being like, I'm going to say things that'll hurt your feelings. Don't invest. <laughs> don't invest. <laughs> And it kind of made me think of like, no, I'm not going to take that on. Like, I'm not going to invest in certain yes. things, but so I don't want anyone to invest in this. If I say anything that you perhaps may be guilty of, but like, I feel like you're looking at me and I'm trying not to invest. I'm looking right at your eyes. Don't invest. (laughs) It's like when people are starting stories and, and you know, I know none of my family listens to this show, but you know who you are. They, (laughs) they start with parts of the story. You not only don't want to hear, like it's, horrible to hear it's like now i was just telling this story who was i telling it to now i have to hear not only who you were telling it to but you can't even remember who you were telling it to so that's like a long preamble then it's like now gosh oh when just so much fucking preamble to a story and like what day something happens like so on thursday nope gosh was it gosh Gorsh is also a phrase some family members say. Was it Tuesday? Was it? No. Okay. It wasn't Tuesday because I remember she was bringing the dog over for a bath. It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we don't have time for that. No, we don't. No. Not, in, not in today's world. Shut no, up. No, we don't. Every breath is precious. Please, Please use them wisely. The other day someone was talking to me on a Zoom and I thought, you know what? There's really, I, people are going to turn on me after this, but I was like, there's really no shame in not being funny. But there is shame <laughs> in not knowing that you're not. Oh, oh, that's a tough, because guess what? Someone's funny and somebody's not funny. So who, who's to say? And I'm who's not the funny say? around. And I know my place if I am with, you know, the best of the best. I, I shut my trap. Oh, I pipe down. I pipe I, down real quiet. And then I'm I come real in. Quiet like a mouse. And then I come quiet in like a mouse. I should. Sometimes I take, I try and take a three pointer, you know, from the sides and that's a sports analogy. I don't understand what I'm using. And it yep. usually is a air ball. <laughs> yep. yep. Just... You got to come in from the side, just real quick. Like, you real know, quick, we like... were talking Danielle about who's been doing a lot of humor during this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to name names whatsoever, no. but there are no a names. few celebs of the, of the, of the, Better looking persuasion of the, mm-hmm. of the good looking persuasion. And we all know the better no looking offense, you get, the less all funny good. you get. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just I'm kidding. a real UG and I'm proud of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> now I'm just attractive. We're, we're no, doing our best. gals are gorgeous. Let's just put it that uh-huh. way. Yes. Stunning. And the, there is no correlation between beautiful women and funny, but these particular gals perhaps weren't blessed with the comedy gene. Mm-mm. They were blessed with things we were not blessed with. No. However, They've taken it upon themselves during this quarantine to do a lot of like mom humor. And it's like, nobody's calling for that. You know, videos of themselves, like making Cheerios and you think they're going to put in milk, but they're putting in rosé. Oh God. (laughs) I will say as in any apocalypse, Mm. um, we should all use the skills that, 
you know, that God gave us, the ones that are really, that have brought forward. Your like core competencies. Yes, core what you got. Can I you make them. fire? Are you a medical expert? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you bring to the table? Those are the things. Let's not try new things. <laughs> Let's just... Look, and I have nothing to offer. You oh, know, I have nothing to offer. I, I will be dead in a day. <sighs> My husband has good apocalypse skills and i'm excited to be with him i feel like those doomsday prepper people because i really did a long like stint with that show i feel like mm -hmm. they're like who's laughing now well but they're just laughing in their jam they're all making jams and pickles but like they're <laughs> <laughs> laughing in their bunkers they're you know it's like yeah but they're sure. also are so already so far off the grid i feel like covid's never gonna get there that's like the weird irony is that they're just mm -hmm. jizzing to do their skill sets they want someone to come over that hill yeah but no one's coming so that their no one's six coming. wives scatter <laughs> speaking of six wives danielle what Last night, I decided to hunker down with an Ambien, and by that I mean take it, but try to stay up. Oh, that's a struggle. That's a, a it, real it's struggle. Like, it's like a struggle that feels so good. I I lean into the Ambien. I really like. I don't struggle against it. I go. I go. You know how, like, in a car accident, you're just supposed to go loose. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I that. That's me I with an ambient. That. I'm just like, go loose, go loose, baby. I've got like full <laughs> neck problems, whiplash, because what I enjoy about it is to take it at seven and see wow. if I can get to 10. Because That's a in struggle. the struggle, Danielle, what you'll find is a release. <laughs> and, uh, so here I am in my haze and I'm like ambient texting people, then I'm ambient eating everything I can find. And that, oh my God, really quick. I'm sorry I'm telling, see, this is terrible storytelling and, and you're going to see it today. It's terrible, but I was just- Do I need to ask you if it's going to be interesting or no? I don't know if it is. Should I pipe? Well, just move forward and we'll see. I was listening to something and Chelsea Handler said she was on Ambien or weed and she literally was on an airplane and she started eating the tray table. First of all, she said, I thought I was in a movie theater. I got up to leave what I thought was a movie theater only to realize I was on a plane. <laughs> I think I read that in her book. <laughs> yes. And then she started eating the tray table. I was crying. Oh, but that's beautiful. I guess. So anyway, last night I started binging everything I could, food and then sister wives. I went. Oh, back. you love a sister wife binge. I haven't been there June. Uh, June. Well, June is your sister wife, sister wife. Exactly. And I haven't been in two years with touching down with Cody and the gals. And I'll have tell it changed? You, Anything changed? God no. But <laughs> what has changed is Cody's hair. It's gotten a little looser and wilder. <laughs> okay, he looks like Curly Sue from that movie. <laughs> okay. He looks exactly literally crazy. insane, like a white haired Curly Sue with his gross long goatee. It is so shocking his hair, what's happening. And he's putting it in a little pony ponytail mm. now. Mm -hmm. It is. It's really upsetting. And as June Diane said, what she's been trying to get to the bottom of is who is Cody quarantining with? Can't they all quarantine together? Isn't that the, the point of a sister wife relationship is like, that's the no. Okay. Oh. You would think Danielle, but they've been booted out of Las Vegas and now they're in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is a hot spot for COVID, I believe. And Ooh. none of them will live together. So it's like, why are you all married to the same man, but yet not living together? So they're all in different houses. Of course, Mary still somehow works out getting a mansion, despite the fact that it's just her and one kid. She's like, but I'm still an equal <laughs> partner in this. <laughs> so anyway, they're there. And I just feel like with that 21 people, can you really keep track of everyone? That COVID could run through them like a wildfire. Oh, like a wildfire, especially in Arizona. Nobody's wearing masks. Masks. What? No one's, I was trying to say masking up and no one's wearing masks and it didn't work out, but. Now, speaking of not wearing masks, Danielle. Housewives. We've been touching down on some Instagram accounts from the housewives, just kind of seeing where everyone's been at through this time. And yeah. wow, I, I want to read a little something that Leah posted today, as, as aforementioned, about Ramona, obviously, and maybe Sonia and Luann. I am so disgusted by some of my castmates and their families who spent the entire fucking quarantine in Florida living it up, showing everybody how they're living it up. Then Florida, of course, the cases surge. They fucking come back to New York and are out like nothing, not quarantining, not taking this shit seriously, and basic, basically laughing in all our faces. How fucked up is it that you think you're going to come back and reap the benefits of our hard work and possibly spread fucking COVID? That is despicable and very de classe. 
<laughs> Can I say, Casey? Yep. I want to say that's some of the best acting you've done. Really? Ever. It was beautiful. It was um, ups and downs. I felt like there was complex emotion. Like, it, that was oh, a beautiful Danielle. monologue. I tried to keep it moving because I knew You it did, long. but... But, you know, like, I pause too much in my acting, and, and I've been told that before. It's like I'm trying to, like, have the moment not on the line, and you were living it on the line. What do you mean not have that, the moment on the line? Like, you know how sometimes, like, guys, this is an acting note. but Give me a, give me a line reading. Like, when you were like, like, sometimes I'll breathe and do the emotion and then say the line. And you're having the emotion on the line, meaning, like, use one of the lines. Okay. Say one of the lines. And I find that... Very despicable and day classic. Okay. So mine would be, and I just, I find that despicable and day class A. Instead, you just had the emotion on the line. See how I like had the breath right. there. And let it carry you through. You would just do it. Yeah. But I also liked your read. You know, it's, well, there's always you. reads. Well, look, there's a lot of ways to act. And I'll say this, if you're home quarantining, a lot of times what I make my family do at Thanksgiving, and I'll tell you, there's some non-actors in the bunch. You know, we're spread, <laughs> we're in Alabama, we're in Florida, we're in Missouri, we're in Rhode Island. Like, we've got a crew. Mm -hmm. And I give everyone a play. The same monologue. Which... And I make everyone read it. Whatever I find in my shelf. You know, it's Sam <laughs> Shepard. And when you see your uncle do you know like kenneth lonergan it is i we we are crying just listening to uh, everyone's read or i'll give everyone a line normally the, the a good line is like you say okay you're gonna pick up the phone you're at a party okay so you're okay. like this, you're is an, I'm, this is a great game it's I'm, wonderful it's it. wonderful you can stay seated though those are the games i like the most so everyone you say this is your scene you're at a, and i'd like to see you do it too danielle if i could uh-huh you're at, sure. you're at a party, okay? So mm -hmm. you first have to be you're at a party, then you're okay, at a party. So you need to tell the people you're with, like, give me a second. Okay. But that's silent. So it's, uh, I'll let you say, give me a second, because no one okay. can hear you. You pick up the phone, and here's your line. And I'm not going to give it anything, because I want to hear okay. your take. Your line okay. is, I'm adopted, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to play. Okay. Let me do this. Okay. 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 You're at a party. Get there. At a party. Yep. It's a dinner party. Okay. Oh, um, let me get my phone. Expecting a call. One second. Hello? I'm adopted? <laughs> <laughs> I, liked it. I like that you were expecting good news. You're like, ooh, I'm yeah, like I Kim Cattrall. You're like, I'm expecting a call. I was. <laughs> I gave myself something. Were you expecting that call? No, I was not. Oh, that's nice. Okay, you had you were playing I was... opposition there. Yes. What a nice turn. Thank you. <laughs> wow, wonderful. Thank you. Oh, okay, should we get back to what the housewives are doing? Yes. We really took what everybody do you have, on a Danielle? journey. You've been seeing a lot of. Okay, I've been seeing a lot. First of all, I want to say our our dear Karen Huger. I'm really impressed by her because she during this time has taken the time and money to donate a bunch of PPE supplies to local hospitals in the DC and uh, Potomac area. So wonderful. Great. You know, what but, I, you know what I hope she isn't donating? What? Her perfume. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. It was like pizza. I was just trying to, like, just trying to like go back. I forgot. You know, there's helping, so those, and then there's hurting. Then there's hurting. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. But that's for beautiful. people. That's beautiful of her. I will say that um, Cameron, Cameron Westcott oh boy. of of oh Dallas boy. has taken this time, <laughs> taken this important time of reflection to get on TikTok. That seems to be oh where she's at. Just doing a lot of TikTok. With her kids. And her um, nannies. Mostly, somebody's filming her. I assume she's putting the kids to work. I don't and feel like she's, it's court filming her. No. He would only get like half of her weight. She's a smaller man. <laughs> he couldn't get her in frame. Like, yeah, I can't frame up both. <laughs> can't frame up that, that tall of a the lady. That like, tall of a glass of water. Like, don't bother me, Cameron. It's like, I'm working. <laughs> get up. She's like, but sparkle dog. <laughs> So she is, you know, taking the time to do other things. Um, Jill Zarin mm. and Allie Zarin, oh. housewives in the past, have been taking this time to make masks and sell masks. Okay. Not for free. They're selling them. That's okay. That's okay. And she, yeah, she was doing some things in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So they're doing masks, and, which makes sense. Zarin Fabric has a lot of fabric, I'm sure, to, um, to give. Anybody else on your list? Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, in over an OC... 
Oh, We've God. got Tamara Judge and Vicky posting on June 11th. Mm. Girls night out at Five Vines Wine Bar with about six girls crammed up tight, not a mask in sight. Uh, she says, celebrating something exciting. Hashtag Tamara and Vicky's new show. Hashtag calm down. Restaurants are open in OC. Hashtag support small business. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you for doing the great work. And then Countess Luann is also with a gaggle of gals at a restaurant. And she just simply <laughs> says, ladies who lunch and apparently love print, too. Because they're all in print. print wearing prints. Oh. Mm. I saw a post of hers from last week where she was just in like a nightgown and a and a teddy bear. Like, just like mm. kind of, yeah. it was so creepy. You know, it she's was... selling that house on the Hudson. How much is she asking? Anyone know? 1.1. 1. 1. <laughs> wow. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. 1.1. 1. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, she said she's selling it because these days she loves it and it was her oasis and the time for her to rebuild. But these days she's staying in the Hamptons, you know. Kelly Dodd is just really <sighs> out there. Now, Kelly took this time to, 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 to take a little vacation sightseeing in New York City. The hot spot of the coronavirus. Kelly is can be seen maskless in front of a I love New York display, just having a blast. She's a true garbage human. Well, so people are, you know, attacking her like crazy. And yeah. and she she calls them all. Anyone who attacks her for not wearing a mask or whatever, she calls them Karen's. She's like bunch of Karen's. What? I know. She's it's like you that's not what that is. No, you're the Karen. We're the Karen. That's what <laughs> I mean. The... We're all Karen. We're all Karen. You're a Karen. I mean, and then someone said something about Cuomo. She's like, yeah, Governor Cuomo did an excellent job with nursing homes. Yeah, I'm going to take his word for it. She's just a nut. She's really gone nutty. Do you think they're going to keep her on? God, I don't know. They're dropping like flies. They sure are. I don't know. I just don't know, Danielle. She's a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm looking so many posts. Um, uh, Sonia Morgan, Miss mm. Morgan, has been really pressing people to get cameos these days. That's what's keeping the townhouse afloat these days. Is those cameos <laughs> seem to be <laughs> seem to be what she's she's doing. What she's got going. She's plugging lots of cameos. She's like, cheer up your friend, get a cameo. Now, Brandy Red Redmond from mm -hmm. Dallas. Now, I just glanced very quickly at this, so who knows what else is going on. But she did say, muted, I am listening, I am learning. Hey. Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. Okay. I mean, it's all just, you know. I mean, there's so much to discuss, Danielle, because... Nini was, is with Greg. Oh, that's right. So Nini is with Greg and has had several posts when she's not meeting with a symposium of women. <laughs> um, she's always like, I just picked 20 more random friends to come over to my house and I have a symposium about women. She's never not having a symposium. Never not. Portia. Oh, Portia. Portia has, what an evolution we have seen with this woman. Just, I'm so impressed with her, proud of her, want to be her. Like she has really grown in ways that I hope all of us can, can grow as a human she has being been out there and i'm sure a lot of you have seen but protesting giving speeches right in the thick of it in all the protests i really feel i'm like getting tears in my eyes that her grandfather is so proud of her me too me too it's really cool what she's doing i'm just so impressed by it me and she's too. so just she's come into her own yes. in a way that i I am, I'm in awe of, and I'm so, like, I'm like, I'm proud to be her friend. Meanwhile, she has no idea I exist on the planet. And I never but forget when I, Portia, you know, when Portia posted an Instagram about me and her. She, and I, she did. I, I and didn't do you remember when she up. called in and you passed out? Well, that was, of course, the Instagram. So there was really just that one moment we had. Yes, okay. But that okay. was all one and the same. You're um, close. You're, I, you're one step closer than I am. Yeah, but I'm I guess just she so did cool. call me that night. Yeah, she did. She called you. Live. Yeah, and that felt great. Yeah, I'm jealous. You no, know, and I guessed her voice in 0.5 seconds. Because you know. I you know. know. Now, Nina has been doing a lot of dancing with Greg. Yeah. And she keeps posting about their unbreakable bond. I will say with Nini, I know she says unbreakable bond, but it's 
as time has shown, when the going gets tough with Greg, Nini gets going. You know, <laughs> you just be like, Nini gets and, gone. Yeah, she, yeah, she goes. She's gone, she's gone. Girl. gone, baby. Gone. Yes, and does she come back as Greg's health seems to get better? <laughs> yes, she comes back. But I wouldn't call it unbreakable. Mm. I would call it. Uh, depending on health, wow. <laughs> where Greg is, wow. I'm just wow. gonna put that out there. And I know you're good friends with Nini, so I don't want to. I'm staying silent. You, uh, you, you know again, you will never talk bad about your friends, whereas no, I'm happy to. No, I won't. You won't. She's a true blue friend to you, and she can I'll remember tell your you name. Who's been having the time of her life during the quarantine? Who? Ms. Tinsley Mortimer. <sighs> to have for her to have Scotten. Shortcake and shit cake, or whatever their names are. <laughs> Strawberry and shortcake. Strawberry and shortcake. <laughs> so close with her to have Scott just all to herself for this entire quarantine. And they're in Chicago, which is also a hot spot. So, you know, mm. they're not going out. And mm -mm. it's cold. It's just Kinsley's dream. And this is all she's ever wanted. Oh, she now, can we get into New York with this segue? Because this feels like a beautiful segue. Because the last episode that we've seen of New York, and this was a few weeks ago, so I know everybody's ahead, and but we're still going to yeah. break it because down. We're three weeks behind now. So we are going to cover yes. three weeks weeks worth of New York right now. Go on. Yes. Right now. But the last we saw Tinsley, she got the dream. She got her dream, which was to go to Chicago with the Coupon King and live a life of a trophy wife. That was the dream. And you know what, guys? Mm. I'm happy for her. I am. Is it a shallow dream? Yes. But I cried. I cried. I broke down in tears when she got it because even if it's a, a, a dream that we shouldn't want for ourselves, it doesn't mean it wasn't a dream to her and then I didn't want her to achieve it. And mm -hmm. it felt like nobody else was happy for her. So I wanted to be happy for her. Danielle, I cried when I saw her pulling away and like quit popping her head out the window. With strawberry and shit cake? With them by her side. She's, un she's unbreakable, you know? I... Here's the thing. Is Tim Tinsley the most shallow cast member we've ever had? One of them. She reeks of white privilege. There's so much wrong with Tinsley. Yeah. She doesn't know how to do a thing for herself. Not the a thing. Helpless individual we've ever seen. Yeah. She apparently has made out with her own sister. <laughs> that was a shock. A shock. <laughs> now look. Haven't we Our all? sister buzz. <laughs> <laughs> do I have two sisters? Sure. Do I have memories that are just gone? Of course. Really? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, of course I haven't made out with my own sisters. Have you wanted to? Never. None of the three of us are not the hottest tickets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When she <laughs> said I made out with my sister and Leah's like, you mean like when you guys were really little? And she's like, no, we were just trying to be funny. I was like, ooh. What is funny. They were in a situation where there were some guys, and the guys thought it would be sexy, and they did it. And that is insane. That's a real creep spell. Real creep spell. Well, even on their part. I mean, it's just like, what are you doing? But all that said, Danielle, when she pulled away and got her dream, even though it's a dream that is, like, woefully. It will be shallow, and it won't ever give her the happiness she so desires, but that's for a later day and time. I think it might, Danielle. I think it Well, might. I just, because I don't know that, I'm going to say something controversial. I don't know that Scott will ever love her in the way that she needs to be loved. She's, he's not going to love her like daddy loved her. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sorry. And I'm sure she made out with daddy too. I mean, that oh, it's a real it. day. It's like everybody was dipping into everybody. Oh, it's real gross. It's <laughs> real gross. Dad, when Dale said, oh, just everything's changing. It oh. was. <laughs> Poor Dale. You know, I'm going to miss is Dale. I'm going to miss Dale. I wish That's after Tinsley's car left, it like wiped frame and we saw a, a limousine pull up to those apartments and Dale stepped out, taking uh, over the apple. Oh, Casey, I just got the chills. Yeah, that would have been nice. I would like that. You know, when Ramona like said, much. okay, the best was when nobody's happy for Tinsley. Not a one of no. them can even toast her, can say congratulations. No, she has like her, no one toast her. It's the saddest toast I've ever seen in my it life. It was literally like an invisible woman trying yeah. to, and then... 
Ramona and Luann take her out for this like drink to congratulate her. And I didn't feel like pre was pre date. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like it was so insane. It was like, you know what? We're taking Tinsley out. We want Tinsley to feel good. And we really want to congratulate 6 her. From 6.15 to 6.35, mm-hmm. Tinsley, this is about you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just so insane. And then Ramona was like, all right, all right. He's building you a closet. You're telling me he's building you a closet and a makeup station? That's love. That's love. Yeah, she was like, ah, who cares if they gave her a ring? I was like, these women. <laughs> these yeah. fucking. I do feel like Luann, women. and there's so much to discuss with Leah, but I'll just quickly touch on Luann. For Luann, again, like all these women have the limitations, the most limitations of anyone. But, like, for Luann, I feel slightly more like this year she's a little more voice of reason, kind of, like, a little more compassionate somehow. Yes. In this world, in this specific world only and measuring time. measuring them against themselves. <laughs> each other. In this day, and, and literally the day of shooting that day, she probably had the most compassion. Now, speaking of compassion, mm-hmm. Dorinda's therapist... What is going on? What is on? happening? It's a med spa. I can't, I keep waiting for him to be like, and do you want that vitamin drip, ma'am? I mean, like, it's... are you right? I feel like he's going to pull, he's like, uh huh, uh huh. And then he's going to just pull out her Botox. Like, that's what that place looks like. That that's place, that man, he's not a therapist. Someone told me he's like a, yeah, a new, something yeah, he's something else. He's like a chiropractor. That's what I something. mean. I knew it. I knew it. There's just something else that he is doing. And that, when she says to Tinsley, you know, go get a syringe. What did she say? Um, a, a, a turkey baster. And maybe you can get pregnant. I've never seen such cruelty. Like, here's a woman that has professed many times how much she wants to be a mother. And In fact, it's, it's her greatest, like, r- regret and drama of her life. And so, to Dorinda, it feels like you're... St- why this? Why are you being so nasty? That She's just out of control in terms of like... Dorinda has just become monstrous. Yeah. It's and truly the meanest thing I've ever... It's so nasty. It cuts so to the core. That's why I have to say I relate that to when Tinsley was pulling away and why I was crying. I was like, you know what? I don't know what life holds for Tinsley. And again, this may be it, but like... I, you know, it's you better can't than help being but want the happy ending that these people think they want. Exactly. And like why can't they just be happy for her? Even if like beca- and why do they care that she didn't tell them first? Like I I don't understand well, their does anger. Does Dorinda fucking care? It's I don't so get it. Strange. She's like Tinsley's keeping things from me. It's like I think what you see with Tinsley is what you get. Like we're there. There's no there there. We're here. We're right why do they, here. Well, and why do you keep asking for more? It's so mean and cruel. And Dorinda just looks like a real piece of shit this season. Like, I don't know what's going on with that. And also her Halloween strange outfit with like, it was like a tube top over a turtleneck. It was so strange. It was so strange. Now, there was a man that was in the episode that I'd like to see come back. Be it a full time cast member, be it a part time cast member, at least to hear from him because we have not heard from him yet. And that was in the second episode of our Rhode Island journey, which I was obsessed with. Loved Rhode Island, loved every part mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. Which was in the restaurant that Tinsley's friend had gotten like owned or yes. whatever. When you know Tinsley said the women are cougaring it up at the bar, which should make me yes. laugh. And then over Leah, then when they come back and Sonia's holding like gourds up to her ears, yes, and pumpkins, and it's just complete insanity. And they cut to a man in the background. <laughs> you sent me the screenshot. <laughs> a foppish looking gentleman holding a martini whose eyes bug out of his head with like a sweater wrapped around his shoulder. Yes. <laughs> it's the greatest cameo appearance I've I ever loved seen. Him. I, love I loved him. him. I wanted to know everything about you him. Did. I felt like I was with him. Like I like sometimes an extra lands in a way that is so perfect. He doesn't say a thing. And yet his, and again, that's the editors and the extra giving us giving ev- the us brilliant. Him. That's him. Yeah. And Danielle, it's like, I'd love to hear him do the line. I, would, adopted, love, you know? I would get a cameo from that man. Whoever you are, I will order a cameo from you. Right before we started taping, I was like, fuck, I wish I'd put out a call to see if anyone knows him just to like, you know, pipe him in and just hear, what was going on for him when he when he gave that expression? It was yeah. so beautiful. I love that man. I've watched it a hundred times. <laughs> so, me too. I kept rewinding. Oh my god, he's the best. Oh, 
he was he did and again and not to go back to acting work you know i did go to i did go to drama school but sometimes you don't need to say anything you know judy dench had like eight minutes of screen time in shakespeare and love and still won the academy award and he deserves an emmy with a second of screen time and no words he deserves an emmy i love you wherever you are you provided me a list we bow down to you sir and it's continued you know it's it's I really have gone back to it many times. Um, yeah. So let's talk about Leah's behavior, if we can, the first night in Rhode Island. Yeah. Oof. Leah. Leah, Oof. Leah, Leah, Leah. Leah's got some problems. Mm. One of them being with alcohol. Mm. She's not, mm. look, she's not without her demons. Who am I? She's not. And yet it seems that Real Housewives is not the place to clean them out for her health. Yeah. You know, the demons get to us all. They do. They sure do. They're, they as do. they are wont to do. And especially when you have a camera in your face and a Double martini in your hand. <laughs> you, you know, I think right now with Leah, the demons are winning. Yeah. The battle is... The devil came down to Georgia. <laughs> Dude, what did you say? I said the devil came down to Georgia. Oh my god! Dun, dun, looking dun, for dun. a soul to steal. <laughs> he was a... Oh my god! Oh my god! You made me spit out my script. <laughs> looking for a soul to steal. Oh my... Sorry. But that is what happened that night. Yeah, it just felt like she lost the battle with the devil. But here's so, the thing. And she, I also like her the most. So it's well because she's the only. <laughs> it's like this is the woman I'm holding up as like my I know, hero. And she's not great. She's not great. And I'm like, I love her. I, I actually really love Leah. Um, again, so like we're judging everyone. You know, the bar and the scale it's like the bar is so low in the scale so it's low. like what even is it but in terms of this crew that we are <laughs> these crew of, of our terrible family members it's like look you'll take what you can get yeah and you'll what take you're anyone behaving is... close to close to humans <laughs> just... and what you're you get what you get and you don't get upset with these ladies and wow exactly. i was thinking about it and again i know people get upset when i say people are alcoholics but I mean, take a look at the last season, what we're seeing here. I we're, mean, I think five out of the six. Mm-hmm. We got Leah. We got Dorinda. We got Lou. Lou, of course. We got we got Sonia. Sonia, of course. And then we got Tinsley. Tinsley. <laughs> it's not looking good. But then the craziest of the bunch is <laughs> Ramona okay. does not see. Ramona. She needs to be able to. <laughs> she doesn't help. need any. She's got a... I don't know what a thick skin or I don't know, not just not, you know, it's genetic too. And so her genetics or something or because she still drinks like a fish, but it doesn't seem it's a problem. It doesn't for penetrate. No. Wow. Nothing that, does though. That Made episode steal, was that woman. thrilling for me though. When Leah was running around that table and wanting to bring her sister and then Sonia taking Ramona's side and then, <sighs> and then oh God, at the it. seafaring crab shack with hitting on strange men and and i loved oh god dorinda eating a hamburger for breakfast and boy dorinda's in a tough place i do love the way dorinda's turned around on leah and they like each other now because that is the right yeah. pair yes it is the right pair but and then sometimes elise comes and you forget that she was there and then you remember and you're just like bummed out anytime i see elise i've forgotten about her and then i'm more like oh elise is here and then i'm annoyed i'm like elise yeah. nobody wants you here I prefer, I really, Leah's sister's beautiful. I'll see her anytime mm-hmm. over Elise. Yeah. Now, it did really make me laugh when Leah's sister was introduced and someone's like, where do you live? And she's like, Brooklyn. And Dorinda goes, okay, I saw a thing on New York One Access about Brooklyn. And I said to my daughter, and I taped it with my phone and I said, sister, pack your bags because we're going to Brooklyn. <laughs> I was like, there's my grandma. Like, I, it was like, it was some new area that was just up and coming. <laughs> and then so... Leah, as you do with like your friend's grandma was like, oh, I'd love to see that. New yeah. York One Access piece. Yeah, I did love when I lived. New York One Axis was my 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 channel of choice. Because <laughs> I'm a hundred. My favorite channel was like whatever was playing in the back of a taxi. Oh well, that's always the best channel. Yeah. Always. 
God, these women, I mean, there's just so much Ramona. Here we go again, planning another birthday party and trying to lord it over people. So they care. She's like, I don't care. They're not invited to my party. I got 60. It's my coming coming out party. It's like, what are you, you, what are you coming out of? You just, you came out a few years ago, like I guess into single dumb, like, that happened. That was like four years ago, five years Never ago. What are we doing? That wants to celebrate themselves more than her birthday and people. We've talked about it a ton. Or yes, I don't love birthday people, especially those that are. I got sixty-five friends. I got sixty-five friends. I got sixty-five. Like, it did I, make no, me you laugh don't. When Nobody she likes you. Dorinda out to wherever the hell that party. Plan Why are was? these women always heading out to Long Island to get their thing? Like, we had Sonia going out to meet her business manager or business partner. We have all of these people heading to the island for for their wares like what it's all just so strange now why does tinsley have to leave why does scott equal leaving the show he just finally put put it to her and said you don't do the show it's me or the show i think so and i think they need to live together and he lives in chicago but danielle would have been three more months of filming it's like the gift of the magi i think yes i don't think he liked the show and being on it i don't know why not (laughs) <laughs> and yeah, I don't um know why not. it's been so good for other relationships but um i think yeah he just wants to control the situation a little bit more and she would give up anything for marriage right he's kind of like okay yeah i'll be with you but you're not going to get to do your show your other love i think it's worth it to her clearly you know i just like to leave us with this quote from ramona which also made me laugh out loud and she's just so despicable She said, she's talking about planning her 60th birthday and she's like, you know what about Leah? I'm very disappointed and being disappointed in someone is worse than anger because it just is. (laughs) Because it just is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Let's, should we go take a break and come back with that? Yes. Okay, Beverly Hills. I feel like hopefully we're getting somewhere. We've been climbing this very slow, arduous climb this season Mm -hmm. in Beverly Hills to get to this action with Denise. Mm -hmm. Are we there? Are we almost there? Everyone's holding on for it, but I don't know where we are because last I heard... And by heard, I mean, I saw Denise say this somewhere that the women, (laughs) you know, they had to stop filming at least like Mm -hmm. maybe the last episode or so. I think they were almost done. And then they're now doing their testimonials. You know, Bravo's dropped off cameras. They're doing their testimonials at home. And we're trying to get at what they've seen now and hear from Denise and hear everybody's side of the story. But we haven't even taped that yet. I guess we're doing it probably as we speak. And that just makes me feel like crazy because it's like, I need to know if they haven't even taped it. How are we going to know? I don't know. That's a while. It's so long. And like the whole thing is building up to, I think, this Brandy Denise thing, especially in the light of. No, I'm curious, Casey, what side are you on here in terms of Denise and her protection of her children's, you know, like what they know and what they've seen and everybody else feeling very sensitive to that and feeling like. She's saying, oh, you're a bad mother. Or my, I can't, like, where do you land in this? Well, I'm curious. Of course, there's the obvious bitter irony of her saying, like, please don't talk about threesomes in front of my kids, only for this bombshell to break that she has, in fact, had a threesome with, uh-huh. with, or for a possible threesome with Brandy and her husband or just Brandy or whatever it is. So I see where the women are coming from. I guess in the beginning, I was like, why won't they give her the fact that, like, she just didn't really like the way they were saying all that in front of her kids. Like, I would not love that either. Yeah. You know, like if I had a barbecue, but then it went on and on and on. And then I started being like, there's something very off about Denise. Well, here's the thing that I think happened, okay. which is at first everyone was pretty receptive to it. Like, oh, sorry. Like everyone kind of was like, right. oh God. Like Erica apologized. Right yes. Away. Erica, I apologize. And it seemed like it had gone. And I think what happens is they got embarrassed, but that's what happens when you get called out. Sometimes you feel a little embarrassed and hopefully you say, okay, well, I, I can own that. I'm embarrassed, I, I, but I've, I'm apologizing and I hope that I don't do that again. And um, But I think where people like Erica started to get annoyed is they felt like she kept talking about it and bringing it up. And so their embarrassment kept coming back up again. And then they started to get more defensive. Mm. 
Now, Lisa Rinna, the ultimate shitster of shitsters. If ever there was one. If there ever was a shitster, made it worse and not better, where she was just like, she kept saying like, well, you know, what do your kids think of this? And when your child brings poisons, you oh, own it, own it, own it, that whole own it thing. And those feel like different things to me, which is like, you can still own your past and not be ashamed of your past, but also not want to talk here, have your kids hear you guys talking about threesomes just because it just brings up more questions that you don't feel like dealing with or whatever. It just doesn't feel appropriate for their ages. Especially so the one thing I'll say also about Denise, it's like, she has gone so far past probably what's, I don't mean to be like a grandma, but like probably past yeah. what is, feels appropriate at like a group gathering even of girlfriends yeah like continuously talking about her husband's B big d and like <laughs> <laughs> his big old dino dick you mean <laughs> uh and it's like it's just been so kind of like out there that i think it does start to feel disingenuous like she's upset about something yes. else and i think her husband is crazy yeah oh my god like he a has really agent. It's no. some, some weird shit is going He's on super there. Super fucking weird and controlling. Yep. I I when always he grabbed her time. hand and was like, Ooh. "I'll crush your hand." And when he was also at that party, and I get look wanting to come to your spouse's defense. Denise can hold her own. That's another thing where it's like, I, if I were ever in a fight with friends and my husband started to come in and talk, I would be like, "Get the fuck out of here! This is not for you. Like, this is my thing. Never has Go over there." Come from that. We've exactly. seen with PK and everyone. And even Dorit said that, but when he started being like, okay, why don't we all shake, put hands in the middle and say hoorah, like his condescending bullshit just revved it up more. And so everyone was feeling even more defensive. Like, and so he is creepy to me. Like, I don't like oh, his vibe. So off with him. So off. And that's become very clear this season. And I gotta say, like, uh, uh... I don't even know what to think about it. I did really, really take offense, almost personal offense, when Kyle was upset, was, like, making fun of Denise having this diamond ice sculpture. That was insane, too, it though. It really like, didn't again. almost feel like Kyle. It was so mean and kind of... I feel like Kyle is is feeling this season like people are appearing to be, like, better than her or something. Like, she's like, Dorit, why would you be getting hair and makeup? Like, she's feeling like she's, like, losing all control of, like, her show or D Dorit... You know, Dorit has made a bit of a name for herself amongst yeah. our listeners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not like on the world say. stage. Well, our but friend uh, like turning it up and like providing a look or two. One of our favorite uh, podcast guests, Akila Green, just emailed us this morning. I guess she's like, I'm so desperate for Housewives right now that she's watching Housewives watch other Housewives. She's like, I'm really at the bottom of the barrel right now. But she was but watching she out of Sonia and Luann watching Beverly Hills. Yes, exactly. And she said that Sonia had no idea who Dorit was <laughs> and was calling her Dorit or something to that effect and that it was a real slap in the face to, <laughs> to a, right. a prominent it's really cast something member. when like another housewife doesn't know you like someone in your own like your brethren yeah in your universe who you've been at like Andy's baby shower with like someone in the universe who's who's in the Marvel superheroes universe doesn't know you're a superhero and that superhero has been around for a while now for it's a, a, bit. a for a bit that's upsetting so wonder, thank you Akila for bringing that to our thank you Akila and I wonder how's Buka de Pepo that's the one room of doilies on the <laughs> on the walls, Buka de Beppo. I believe someone, a listener, had seen it. I almost said it's it leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's too easy on the old eyes. No, I think Buka it's in fact it's it's harsh on the eyes. <laughs> that one Buka de, de Buka de Dorit. <laughs> Oh my god, it's too much. It's all too much. I, I gotta say though, I, I like Dorit now. Me too. Me too. You I do too. Vanessa Bayer sent us a clip from Watch What Happens Live with the gentleman of Queer Eye. Oh, this was a thrill. Guys, this was a thrill. One of the gentlemen of... brought up our name and that he'd he'd seen He'd listened to Bitch Sash. I almost Sash. I almost shit my pants. Like I was I almost creamed in jeans. <laughs> I hope so in case you haven't worn jeans in months. I can't fit yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious what you think of what's going on with Garcelle and Kyle right now okay. in terms of yeah. Garcelle saying that Kyle has not sort of doesn't seem to care about her. 
I what are your thoughts on it's that? interesting because I wish they had more footage, not because I don't blame Garcelle, but I want to see what she's up to because I can see this from Kyle. I feel like Kyle right off the bat, and this is what I'm talking about, Kyle seeing other people or mm-hmm. feeling like she's losing control. It's like, here comes Garcelle, beautiful actress with an with love an actual career a, cap- a capital a right like jetting all around you know doing her actual things like an assistant because she actually needs one yes bless you jazzy and i love jazzy, <laughs> I, love jazzy. <laughs> I need to get down with jazzy yeah more, I, i'd love interested. to have a combo with jazzy yeah but i feel like kyle was just threatened and i feel like she kind of ignored garcelle and exactly what she said she didn't get to know her didn't really care no. i think kyle mm-hmm. does have a side of her that's like it's my world And I bet perhaps there were some microaggressions. I'm sure some things happened with her and Garcelle that I think this is unfolding and we're going to learn more. I also think like Garcelle came in like Garcelle's Garcelle. You know what I mean? Yeah. She didn't come in as some sort of newbie like Dorit. You do have to. I do think the newbies like kiss the ring a little bit and all that type of thing. But I think Garcelle's a world famous actress. Yeah. We didn't need she to be didn't introduced even come in to like her. Lisa Rinna, who was like, "Oh, this woman's famous for kind of like taking any job." Exactly. No. So I think that Kyle deserved. Kyle needed to give her a little more respect than the basic new girl that comes in. And I don't think that that was afforded to Garcelle. And because when Garcelle called her out in her speech, it was somewhat shocking because we just are like learning of this. Although she made mention of it at the weird fucking Uh wax museum party. That was at (sighs) Erica's home. Yes, But I was kind (laughs) of like, wow, Garcelle shots fired. Yeah, she sure. really did. You still look on Kyle's I, face. I loved it. I loved. Well, Kyle's not used to that, no. especially from anyone but Lisa Vanderpump, who always did it with a wink and a smile. And I think now that Lisa's gone, Kyle was expecting full rain mm-hmm. and, and on everyone. Happen. And now all she has is Teddy, who is just oh, so insufferable. Mm-hmm. So insufferable. And so I can't even watch her get ready. I know. It's so upsetting. I know. So I, I am looking forward to this event that's going to bring everything to a head because I need something to happen. So yeah, I'm, I, I just want to see it all come to a head and I'm curious where it's all gonna, gonna end up. I mean, we know a little bit, but. And I'm, I've had it with the new one. I literally am struggling to remember her name. I don't remember it either. Sut- Sutton, Sutton. Sutton. I don't know. I'm just, <sighs> I am really appreciating Erica this season. Yes. Are, are we going to, I mean, here's the other thing I got to say. Why don't they have all the episodes, Danielle? They, uh, by the time we went to New York and did our show in January, Erica was almost done with her run of Chicago, which means they were filming this so long ago that Erica was simply just like shimmying and shaking over at Third Street Dance, learning her moves. Do you know what I mean? This timeline is Is it the editing? They can't edit. Maybe they can't edit it. Oh, my husband's editing a show from home. I think maybe they just couldn't do the testimonials because, you know, they normally, I'm, Okay. I think they do a lot of the testimonials after, but I just feel like we've got more in the can or maybe they're teasing it out. We're in trouble, Danielle. We don't have I a know, lot we, left. Potomac is coming back August 2nd. At least there's that. There's a bright spot with Potomac, but what do we have? All we're going to have is Potomac and Beverly Hills, and then we're going to fall off a cliff. We can't. We can't let COVID destroy our, everything this we've part built. of our life. <laughs> this is everything live for like if i'm not gonna leave my house let me have this let me have something i need i'm thinking we're gonna have to pivot a bit here and well i want to start watching married to medicine atlanta yes and um, i i'm pivoting into absolutely and i've retaken up my mantle with 90 day fiance happily ever after the most confusing show it has so many confusing names but this one has the hot pink like hot pink graphic it's totally new there's only been one episode and all the greats are back. I'm talking Colty. I'm talking Larissa. Karini and Paul. Larissa, Larissa. I'm talking Angela. <laughs> and Michael. Michael. <laughs> Angela and Michael. I mean, these are all the greats. It's all stars. All stars. I saw some clips and some previews, and I will be also. Sometimes that show gets shockingly too dark for me, but because it's so like in the preview Colty's mom was saying like if this new woman doesn't appreciate Colty and I's close relationship we're gonna have a problem and that just made me so unbelievably upset since (laughs) we've last seen Larissa she's gotten a nose job and cheek implants and 
So that's that. And I would, I really, 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 really appreciate that the producers have chosen to break the rules and follow Larissa and Colty, despite the fact that they are not together. They are not together. <laughs> They're just like, fuck it. You know what? Yeah. Got two great characters. Now Colty is dating a new woman who had a very uncomfortable car ride with his first night with her. He just turns her and says, should we go back and have sex? Oh, and she's like, Oh, <laughs> I mean, it was just, a how lot. did he meet her? Danielle. Um, sorry. Online. Yeah. I don't know. Same I'm sorry. Thing met Larissa. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It Sometimes I ask stupid questions. And then Larissa but... calls her father on FaceTime, you know, because she's had so many legal problems mm-hmm. and she was just like, Hey, could I maybe have $50,000? Ooh. And her dad was like, Ooh, that's a lot. He goes, I'll wire it to you in two installments. Wow. wow. If I ever called my father and asked him for $50,000, Danielle, I would never hear from him again. Danielle, <laughs> like, never. There's something we're, we're reaching. We're reaching in these times. Everything will be back. I think in, in a week, we get New York. Two weeks, we get Beverly Hills. Um, and we, we get may Potomac. Never see- Potomac is in August. Thank fucking God. I need those women now. I need them like a shot of vitamins. Like I need them in my veins. Look, they're, they're restarting some productions at the end of August and we'll see what, what gets, do, what gets going, what gets to. Everybody keep your fucking masks on and don't leave your house so we can get some goddamn Bravo. <laughs> Anything. Yes. For the safety and lives of everybody, but also for this. Um, exactly. I don't know if Vanderpump rules will ever be back. I don't know if it will, Danielle, because, you know, here's the interesting thing about Vanderpump Rules. As you recall, we hated it in the beginning yes. and everybody forced us to get into it. I'm not blaming you guys. I'm just, no. I'm just telling my truth. We were told to watch it in a different way, which we said, yes. which is everyone is hateable. Like you, you're not going to find, mm-hmm. because I think sometimes we try and like look for ourselves. We're trying to look for the good guy, the normal person, the Bethany or whatever, like the just closest. Someone we can like hang our hat on. Yes. And Kara Brown, a former guest said like, you're absolutely watching it in the wrong way. And we've said this a bunch before, but like you're watching it to like anyone. These people are monsters. Yes. And once you like reconcile that, you can then, it's like adjusting your eyes to the dark. You're like, okay, I can kind of see. And, and then I, it really took off for me. Yes. uh, You know, once I I reframed it like that. And I mean, Stassi and Kristen are done, done, done. And so is Max and Brett, which is a shock that they were not fired initially. Well, as Lisa said, like, and I don't know who fires people because Lisa was like, well, I'm not going to fire them, but it doesn't seem that it, she has control over it. It's Bravo, Well, Lisa right? fires people, I feel like, from Tom Tom, like, but... Well, she fired Lisa Kristen, but she fired, she fired, she fired Kristen Doughty, Doughty? Doughty. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, I cannot say anything. Most but, unfortunate last name, yes, Doughty. Yes, she fired her from the restaurant, but she is still on the show. Well, because now we, Lisa knew at the time Kristen was such a mess that they yeah. kept the camera on her, but at least as the producer of the show, make no... Yes, so I guess she's a part of those decision-making, yeah. but what... Stassi, what came out that Stassi and Kristen did to Faith is disgusting and terrible. And everybody knows what happened with she tried to, yeah, they tried the, to get her the arrested. About and, the Oscars were so shocking. And, and so rightfully they were fired and, um, and, and again, and so were Brett and Max, but like, I was pretty shocked that they just kind of apologized and then they, they were not fired initially. No, they weren't. It was kind of crazy. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if and I think done or not. I don't know. Well, what's also strange about the show in general is that the cast is huge and they brought in four new people this year and all of them six. were white. Six. They brought in six new people this year yeah. and not every Look, single one of them was white. A lot of it Bravo was... is white and the shows are very like segmented in terms of race a lot. And it's, it's, I, I think hopefully there'll be some major changes, but to have 20 cast members. 20 yeah. cast members and then they had one cast member who was black which was faith and then she was off yeah yeah and i i don't know i just i wonder if it would be interesting to have her back on like because i i saw some interview with her recently where she was like i would go back on and kind of like talk about it and stuff yeah. i don't know yeah. but it's just It'll be um and i wonder if that 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 i don't even have the words for danica Danica. I can't. Oh, I was like, who's Danica? The one that yeah. blew into the, yeah. Like there's 100 cast members. I don't, I don't think that crew will be back. I, I don't know. The show might truly be done. I don't know if I care that it's done. 
I have to say. I don't know that I need to see any of these people. I'm also shocked that Jax has not been fired because now we know he had a part in all of this. Like, I I don't know where they go from here. I don't need to see Vanderpump Rules. I don't know that it has some secret formula that I need to watch. And these people, I think that they could cast a very interesting show. Yeah, because by the same token, what I was just saying in terms of like, we reframed it and we're watching it that it's like, it's now been reframed a third step into where I'm now just like, oh, it's put a really bad taste in my mouth. So I don't know. Yeah. um, I don't know where they go from here. Cast member fired from below deck. Look, this is a time of upheaval. People gots to go. Yeah, it's a it's a time of reckoning. Yeah, it sure is. So and, uh, that's where we're at, everybody. This that's is where we're at. that is. And next week we'll be back. We'll be back to report the news of the day. News of the day. We'll have New York to contend with. I don't. I still don't think Beverly Hills will be back. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We'll report on some, maybe some ninety day fiance. I'm happily ever fine after. With seeing a testimonial, like in front of a, you know, someone's home. To them shooting it themselves. If we can all do, Zo- let's reunion. see some Zoom. Let's see some Zoom monials. I'm fine with that. Absolutely fine with that. I do have one more thing to say about Vanderpump Rules, and mm-hmm. you know, I didn't even watch the third reunion after all this. I'm like, I don't really want to see these people anymore, but. The first one I watched, I just wanted to point out one thing, which is that I've never seen such a sad collection of plants behind people. Wow. I, yeah. I hear that. I didn't notice, but you wow. don't. Just, I don't think it, one it of them. It kind of felt like a, a metaphor, just wilted plants. Dead that plants. Is, that is a metaphor. They are a bunch of wilted, dead plants. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because on this podcast, you know, we've, I think we've made no bones about the fact these are all garbage people <laughs> and we in turn are garbage people for watching them yeah all. i think we've like we have we have made no bones about that that there's not a there's not many there's not a good, good apple no <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not, not a, a good apple a, and in turn we are i i might i might give a portion of sonia my good apples yo i'll give portia well, all the apples i'll give portia all my apples yeah She's a true treasure. True treasure. I'll give candy. Oh, yeah. I'll candy, give candy. Of course. of course. Does anyone in New York get anything? I would have given Sonia, Denise. Sonia, I will. I don't know. I have waver on Sonia. I um, will say Denise, I I was going to give her the good. Because I, I do think. think I think I'll Denise, give it. I do think there's a good person in there. I think she's a good and person. And I'm going to absolutely give Erica and Garcelle that as well. Yeah. Okay. Look, there are some good. There's yeah. some good. Yeah. We got some some good apples. And with something to hold on to. But the and bunch something... of them are rotten. The rest oh, of them are rotten. Just fucking rotten. Wormy, wormy to the core. Look, and are we much better? Look, we're, no, we're I'm sitting full. here talking about them. <sighs> but guys, we love you and we, we know that we miss you. And we've got some exciting announcements coming up in terms of summer live shows that we are planning. Again, yes. of course, our beloved 500 first uh, donators, we'll get to see that show first and for free. And we do thank everyone else that donated as well. Thank you Even, guys you so know, much. It was just really beautiful. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for um, just supporting such a important cause. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Earwolf. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, myself. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I worked hard to get here today. I worked hard to get here. Every week it makes me laugh.